Hands on with the new Galaxy S8 from Samsung. Phones are stale. Whether it's an iPhone 7, Pro IP10, Sony Xperia XZ Premium or any other flagship phone, they all look and feel the same. But just when I thought a phone couldn't surprise and delight me anymore, the Samsung Galaxy S8 proved me wrong. From the moment I picked up the S8, and its larger, 6.2-inch sibling the Galaxy S8 Plus Dash I realized it was even more special than I expected. On this evidence, Samsung has surpassed anything we've seen before. There are one or two concerns ahead of our full Galaxy S8 review, but right now things are looking bright. Samsung Galaxy S8 Release Date and Price the Galaxy S8 goes on sale globally on April 28 for £689. Samsung Galaxy S8 Specs 5.8-inch Quad HD Infinity Display, AMOLED Samsung Exynos 8895, Europe and Asia, or Qualcomm Snapdragon, USA 4GB RAM, 64GB Storage, Micros up to 256GB 3000mAh battery with wireless and fast charging Rear camera 12 megapixels, f-1.7 aperture and dual pixel sensor Front camera 8 megapixels, f-1.7 and autofocus Iris and fingerprint scanner Samsung Bixby personal assistant Android 7 Nugget with Google Assistant Stunning design Let's start with the design, where nothing comes close to the Galaxy S8. It's the best looking phone I've ever seen. The curved back nestles perfectly in your palm, while the glass shimmers as light hits it. The three colors, a dark black, bright silver and a gray with a bluish tinge, are all subtle. There's no ugly white front plate in sight. The S8 is thin, and incredibly light at 155 grams, but it feels sturdy and precisely made. It's IP68 water and dust resistant, so it's good for 30 minutes to depths of 1.5 meters. The glass is a little fingerprint prone, but no worse than any other glass phone I've used. Like the recently launched, and still excellent, LG G6, the front of the Samsung Galaxy S8 is almost all screen. And this is really what makes the S8 stand out, Unlike with the G6, though, the display here melts away into the sturdy metal rim. There's no edge version this year, because both versions have a sloping panel. It's a much subtler curve than on the Galaxy S7 Edge, just like on the Note 7, and that makes it a lot easier to use. There's still a bit of extra reflection on this portion of the screen, but it's a small trade-off for such an eye-catching look. Having such a big display and tiny bezel means there's no room for the fingerprint sensing home button to sit on the front. Instead it's on the back, next to the camera. It's one of the few things I don't like, I hit the camera multiple times when testing it out, but maybe I'll get used to it. HDR comes to phones. There's more to the display than just the curves, actually a lot more. First off. It has a new aspect ratio of 18.5 to 9, rather than 16 to 9. This means it's taller, essentially giving you more space in a body that isn't that much bigger than the S7s. While the Galaxy S7 had a 5.1 inch display, the S8 has a 5.8 inch one. It sounds huge, but the phone itself feels compact and Samsung is keen to point out that it can still be used comfortably in one hand. Like the majority of Samsung phones, the panel is AMOLED and has a slightly odd 2960 by 1440 resolution. It's also Mobile HDR Premium certified, so you'll be able to stream HDR, high dynamic range, shows from Amazon Prime and Netflix when those apps are updated. HDR is arguably the most important evolution in TV techies recent years, giving you better contrast and a brighter picture. If you have used an S7, or an S6, you won't be surprised to hear this is a stunning display. Colors are glorious, but it manages to avoid oversaturating brighter shades. A short HDR clip showed off inky blacks, and blues and reds that looked like they were painted on the display. 
photos struggle to do its justice, but it's easily as good, and probably better, than the HDR display on the LG G6 and the 4K one on Sony's Xperia XZ Premium. Under the stunning body is a serious amount of power, though it depends where you live as to which chip you'll get. Brits, and others in Europe and Asia, will get Samsung's own Exynos 8895 chipset, while those in the USA will get a version with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835. Whichever CPU you get, it shouldn't make a huge amount of difference. Both are the fastest out there and they're built using a 10 nanometers production process for improved efficiency that'll hopefully eke some more battery life out. There's 4 GB of RAM, Samsung clearly didn't see the need to bump that to 6 GB, and Rumi 64 GB of internal storage with support for 256 GB micros cards. Phone performance isn't something that causes concern anymore, especially on flagship devices. The Snapdragon 821 CPU in the LG G6 might be 6 months old, but there isn't an app or daily task that can cause it to break sweat. So why does Samsung really need to push things further? The Desktop Experience Well, aside from hopefully improving battery life, that extra performance is being used to power a new feature called Dex. I like to think of this as Microsoft's continuum, but without being terrible. Like Continuum, DeX requires a sold separately 150 pounds dock that connects to an HDMI equipped monitor and turns your Galaxy S8 to a mini PC. The dock also has power, two USB ports and an Ethernet connector along with a smattering of fans in the base to keep the phone from getting too hot. Dock the phone via the USB-C port inside the cradle and a new desktop, which looks a lot like Windows 10, pops up. Your apps are displayed in a very familiar layout and there's a dock along the bottom that lets you access all the phone and text functions of the phone. What makes this so much better than Continuum is app support. Apps are resizable and bounce between phone and tablet versions depending on how much you stretch them, and you can have loads open at the same time. I opened the browser, Lightroom, Google Photos, Facebook and the whole suite of Microsoft Office apps and there wasn't even the slightest hint of slowdown. You can even stream your actual Windows desktop if mobile apps aren't quite enough. It won't completely replace your PC, but it's the best interpretation of this feature yet, and something I'm interested to try more. Basic Camera Upgrades The S8 is a sizable improvement over the S7 in almost every area, but the camera has the fewest upgrades. There's no dual sensor system here, no wide-angle lens or variable aperture. Instead, there's a single 12 megapixel sensor behind a wide f/1.7 lens that uses the same dual pixel tech as the S7. The only obvious addition is a new multi-frame image processor that takes three shots every single time you snap, reducing blur and leaving you with a sharper shot. The S8 might also benefit from speed improvements thanks to the faster processor, but the core camera is very similar to the S7's. Of course, the S7 still has a fantastic camera, but I'll have to use the S8 more to see if its snap is now as good as the pixels. The front camera has seen a bigger upgrade, with a new 8 megapixel sensor. It also has an f/1.7 aperture and there's autofocus too, which is still a rarity on selfie cameras. There's a secondary camera on the front, but this one is for the iris scanner that Samsung says is much improved over the version on the Note 7. Software Improvements Software used to be one of Samsung's weaknesses, but that's not the case anymore. In fact, the software layer on top of Android 7.0 is good looking and functional. Icons are much more mature, and the on-screen buttons, a first for a Samsung S-series phone, are all angular and edgy. The star quite color scheme is clean and crisp, and all of Samsung's native apps have adapted that look. Google Assistant is on board, although I doubt there will be daydream support, as that sort of clashes with the newly updated Gear VR and its snazzy motion controller. The biggest software addition is Bixby, Samsung's Siri rival. This personal assistant is stuffed into the software and pops up everywhere. There's a dedicated Bixby button on the side, so you don't need to call out an awkward phrase to get it going, and the camera has a setting for scanning everyday items and searching online for the best price. 
the leftmost home screen is Bixby's home, and it feels like a souped-up Google now. It displays news, steps, your heart rate, suggested YouTube videos and so on. You can talk to Bixby, but on release it'll only support Korean and US English. British English is coming later in the year, as are other languages. Another new app is Samsung Connect. This is like Apple's home, and connects to a smart things hub to let you control your entire smart home from one screen. It's cool I guess, but you'll need to be heavily invested in the smart things ecosystem to make full use of it. The final piece of the puzzle is the battery and it's an important part for obvious reasons. Samsung is taking battery safety very seriously, as those constant TV adverts running you through its procedures demonstrate. There's a 3000 MR cell inside the Galaxy S8, which feels very small to me. Considering it has to power the 5.8-inch mobile HDR-ready display, I feel it should be bigger. Still, Samsung says it'll get you through the day thanks to the more efficient processor. Wireless charging is still here, even on the European model, take note, LG, and adaptive fast charging too. First Impressions the Samsung Galaxy S8 is a new beginning for flagship phones. It's a gorgeous sliver of tech that utilizes its power for extending the experience beyond the 5.8-inch display, thanks to DeX. It crams a huge screen into a compact body, without sacrificing features such as water resistance and expandable storage, and takes phone design to the next level. Once you've picked up an Galaxy S8, all other phones feel somehow less interesting. My only reservations are minor. Will the battery last the day? And can that camera go one better than the Google Pixels? Oh, and it's going to be expensive, but what flagship phone isn't these days? Unless Apple finally innovates again with the iPhone 8 then Samsung will once again have the best phone you can buy. These are our first impressions based on initial hands on time with the new Samsung Galaxy S8. We'll be publishing a full review of the phone close to the Galaxy S8 release date on April 20th. Thank you for watching this video. If you like, please like and share comment. Do not forget to press the subscriber.